Hey everyone, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Dr. Mike McCutcheon, and today I'm going to do a little experiment using blood stains. Now these are experiments that you can set up if you're a teacher, you can set them up in your classrooms, uh, have your students do, you could even do them at home. Um, what we're going to look at today is how height can change the, um, the size of your blood stain. And then we're also going to see how different objects, when blood falls off a different object, how that can change the size of your blood stain. And then lastly, how different surfaces, when blood falls on a different surface, how that's going to change the size of your blood stain. So let's get to it. So I have a couple of things here. Um, some things, if you were trying to set this up for someone at home, um, uh, students at home, for example, they may not have all the fancy stuff. So I also have the basic rudimentary stuff to do to, uh, to make our video. So first thing we need is we need a way that we can uh, make our blood droplets. So here is a, um, a plunger that's going to measure out. I can put in the size of the blood droplet that I want, and then I can make sure that I'm using the same size blood droplet for all my, my experiments. If you don't do this, certainly if you are just trying to wing it and you have a more uh, voluminous blood droplet, that's gonna make a bigger stain. If you have a smaller one, it'll make a small stain. So you wanna make sure that you're, you can uh, make sure that that variable is taken out by using the same size blood, uh, same size blood droplet each time. So we have this fancy one. If you don't have that, I have these just little pipettes. Um, they're just small. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have to try to see if we can get the same size blood droplet putting in there. Not as accurate, but again, this is what you might have um, available to you. Now, once we drop our blood stains, we have to measure them. And we have a couple of ways we can measure them. You can measure your blood stain using a digital measurer like this. This caliper here is a digital caliper. It will give you the uh, millimeters of your blood stain. Or if you don't have that, you can use any ruler that has the millimeter measurement on it to measure your blood stain. And I also like this one, and this is the loop. The loop will also uh, measure your blood stain. It's a magnifier and then inside the magnifier you can see that it has a um, a millimeter measurement so that way you can measure your blood stain as well. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use so I'm using blood uh, real blood for my blood stains and the way I want you to set this up <clears throat> if you're going to do this as an experiment the question is will height affect the size of your blood stain? So what we want to do is we want to be able to measure the different size of blood stains based on the height. So the first thing that we can do, and I'm just going to use the pipette because it's, it's a little quicker for us here, is I'm going to drop, um, I would measure up about six inches or so. And you can mark this off, that's why I have this here. And then you can mark off at six inches and you drop on one substrate. This here measures three feet. So I can drop again at three feet and then you can measure each stain as it goes up. Now, ideally what you would like to do is I'm doing this in the studio here. So uh, I only have three feet, I mean uh, 30 inches. What you would like to do in, um, if you're able to, is drop one all the way from as high as 10 or 12 feet. And then you're going to measure the size of the stains. And what you can see here, so here we have our two blood stains that we just dropped from uh, maybe six inches or so, and then the three feet. And we're gonna use our caliper here. I'm actually gonna come in on this side. And what you can see is this one is the one that we dropped. Scoot it in. Perfect. So that is measuring about 10.7. This is the drop that we measured from the about uh, the six inches or so. Three to six inches. 
And now this is the one that we measured from about 30 inches. And we're measuring in at 11.9. So even just with that little bit of change, that little bit of elevation difference, we see that the higher up you are, that that blood stain is going to get a little bit bigger. Okay, so we see that the even just these small little drops here are the changes are changing the size and diameter of our blood stains. So height is going to correlate with um, the size of that blood stain. Now, one of the things, can you determine the height by measuring the blood stain? You can't. Go back to what I said earlier. You can't say the size of the blood stain from a certain height because you don't know how big that blood droplet was. So a larger blood droplet is going to give you a bigger stain and a smaller blood droplet is going to give you a um, smaller stain depending on the size of it. So that's how it's going to go. Now, how else we're going to look at is how different substrates would change that. So now I can measure that nice and clear, nice and easy. It's on a nice flat tile surface. But if I do a blood droplet on a tissue paper, a hardwood floor, and then a rug. Now, let's look at this. So let's look at these. Let's see how the texture changes. So here on our nice flat surface, you see nice perfect edges. This thing looks really, really nice. It's a nice smooth surface. Um, it doesn't have any, um, any texture to it. It's very smooth. Now here, you can see this soaked up the entire drip. It actually has another little one right in there. But this one here, uh, the droplet soaked right in. This is very small. This is a mild textured surface. We have a small little satellite that came off of that. Um, but we have a very small uh, satellite here. It's a little bit smaller than the drop that we had um, because the texture is affecting the size. And then lastly, we have our paper towel. Now this, you can see that the, the edges are not smooth. So measuring this is going to be difficult. What you would have to do is try to measure as if this were a perfect circle to measure here. Now, as we saw with the last experience, the hot, uh, experiment, the higher up we go, these stains, even on this one here, this one will probably get bigger. We know for sure on the other substrates that the stains are going to be larger depending on the height that they fall. Okay, so we can see now that depending on the substrate, the size of these stains are very, very different. Um, but they're still going to correlate, hopefully, depending on the height. So we're going to do 3 inches, 12 feet, 3 feet, 6, 12 feet, and then measure each one. Now, this is something that you can do when you can chart. You're measuring each stain to see how they correlate with that height. Now, the other thing that we want to look at is, and I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to steal a piece of this. So what we can do that back. I just want to clean my blood stains for this. Okay. What we want to do for this is we want to see if this the surface, if I'm going to use this chisel here with this flat wide surface, is going to differ than if I drip blood off of a pointed surface. And so the way we're going to do that is, again, we're going to use our pipette. And I'm going to take it. Now, again, you'd want to use the same amount of blood, because if I put a lot of blood on this and only a little blood on the chisel, that's going to ch uh, change the size. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my blood on my chisel. And what I want is not that. I want it to be able to drip off the tip of the chisel. There we go. Looking pretty good. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to take our, our chisel here. 
and let's take that down. And then I will put my chisel up here. And then the same thing, I'm going to take my blood. Now, normally uh, the clamp won't hold that up. So what I would do is I use my zip tie actually to hold this up. And now I'm going to put blood on the flat edge of this and see, now I can see already, this is giving lots and lots of, of uh, spatter and, and satellites because it's dripping into the drips. So that's all we wanna do for this experiment is we wanna see, we're just measuring or answering the question. Can you tell the height that a, blood, uh, a drop of blood came from depending on the diameter of it? And then we're going to see how those correlate. So this is very easy to set up. It's nice and easy to track. Again, you can, even these uh, digital calipers are fairly inexpensive. You can get them online for like 10 or 15 bucks. They're not that expensive. So you can get those. When you're going to do this, um, I use uh, real blood. You're gonna want something that's a little more viscous. You could use the fake blood, would work just fine for this, um, but this works pretty well um, also. So I'm just gonna change my gloves here because I'm making, making a mess. Here, we'll give a little treat Sawyer for being a good boy. And that's it. So what we're going to do, um, clean this up here, uh, measure our stains. I uh, hope you like the video. These are great. I'm going to try to put out a couple more for um, experiments that you can have your students do or you can practice with. Even just this little change in height will make a big difference. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.